I am ready to go home. Let me out of this place, please. I have children to feed. I have people to mind. Let me go. I want to go home. Two for emergency, emergency, need assistance, emergency. On January 3rd, 2000, by conducting my routine checkup on the patients admitted to Ward 13 of the psychiatric institution, I noticed the patient banging her hand repeatedly on the railing of the bed. On her arm was a huge wound that was bleeding profusely. Upon further examination, I noticed that this, this wound was indeed infected and was at least two days old. As a psychiatrist, I wasn't able to contain such wound, so we rushed him, her, to the operating wing of the Togo complex. Radha Chang was by far the weirdest patient that I have encountered as there was no reasonable explanation for such her irrational behavior. In addition to such behavior, she slept for very long periods of time and had a lack of an appetite while being admitted to the hospital. Come in. requesting an uh, ambulance to treat patient Ranan Chan for stitching. I stop and fix the wound. Thank you. Doctor, what's that noise? Freedom! What's going on in there? Good morning. <sighs> Doctor! Doctor! Yes? The patient. We have a problem. She's unresponsive. Really? Hmm. She's in a coma. Yes, I think she's in a coma. Okay, we need to get some blood tests done. We need to do an MRI because she was the mad patient, right? Yes. Right, we need to do an MRI and um, we need to get a blood test done immediately. As well as I need you to get her psychiatric forms. Oh God, all these mad people in the hospital. When Radha Chan was admitted to me at the emergency wing, I performed five stitches and after dressing her wound, she was left to rest. Later that evening, when the attending nurse brought her change of clothes, she realized that she was sleeping and in an unresponsive state. When, I, when she alerted me of the observations, I realized that Radha Chan was in a state of comatose, which made me think that there must have been some underlying medical condition that had to be diagnosed. I therefore requested that a full blood test be performed so I could determine what triggered her coma and I also requested her medical portfolio from the psychiatric institution. Her files showed that she exhibited poor coordination, 
hypotonia, seizures, hallucination, nocturnal sweats and tremors, and before this, she was a chronic alcoholic. The results of her blood exam revealed that she had high levels of ammonia in her blood, which made me think that it must have been some urea cycle disease. I therefore requested that a quantitative measurement of blood amino acid level test be done, as well as urine test, MRI, and a cultured skin fibroblast be done to determine which urea cycle disorder she was suffering from. So, what's up with the results? Hi. Okay. What's up with the results? Patient showed significant increase in her citrulline levels and 571 microns. Wow, per that is a lot. Mm -hmm. Her ammonia level as well was significantly higher than a normal individual of 317 micrograms. Wow. Of course, the MRI that we took as well showed significant lesions mm -hmm. in her white matter. Yeah, same thing. Okay. Right? Mm hmm subquartal white matter as well was damaged mm -hmm. in her corpus callosum as well yeah which would be the result of her irrational behavior of course yeah um of course that the the swelling of which we saw mm -hmm. was the building of the ketamine in her blood okay right so it caused right. water retention in her brain right which points into what citrulline anemia yeah so you would organize her, her medication yes i would okay very good okay anything else no, that's it for now. Okay. Alright. It's customary of any case that we have that a series of experiments are conducted in order to confirm any possible hypotheses that we may have with the patient. One of which was the blood amino acid levels which received which reveals elevated levels of citrulline of 571.0 micromoles per milliliter, which is significantly higher than normal. The blood amino levels also collected from the blood serum showed 317 micrograms per deciliter, which is significantly higher than the normal range of 0 to 40 micromoles per liter. The urine collected from our patient today showed high erotic acid levels, which are abnormally elevated from the usual 5.7 micromoles per milliliter. A cultured skin fibroblast which was collected usually serves to assess the activity of the enzyme agenosuccinate synthetase which showed presence of a low concentration. In the MRI conducted, the patient showed extensive cerebral white matter lesions, spotty neurotic lesions with oedema present an extensive subquartal white matter as well as a corpus callosum. This was caused, and it's kind of suggested to be caused by the buildup of glutamine, which causes water retention in the brain. So far, all tests pointed to urea cycle disorder, specifically the urea cycle disease of citrullinemia. Okay, so now I'm just going to do a little reading on citrullinemia and how it is caused. Citrullinemia is an inherited disorder that results in the accumulation of ammonia and other toxic compounds in the blood of human beings. The case seen today showed an onset of symptoms of citrullinemia type 2. In order to understand the biochemistry of this disease, the urea cycle must be understood as it is known for its role in the excretion of ammonia in the form of urea and what is greatly affected by this genetic disorder. So. The urea cycle is made up of a series of reactions utilizing four high-energy phosphate bonds to aid in the manufacturing of the nitrogenous compound called urea. Urea is the body's form of getting rid of all nitrogen as it cannot be stored or tolerated in high concentrations in the blood. In the urea cycle, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and two molecules of ATP mediated by carbamoyl phosphate synthesis 1 donates the carbonyl group as well as the nitrogen group to the carbamoyl phosphate molecule. The carbamoyl phosphate with its donated carbonyl and nitrogen group 
then combined with L-ornithine, which is mediated by ornithine transcarbamoylase, where an inorganic phosphate is also released as L-citrulline is produced. It must be noted that all these reactions are taking place within the mitochondrial matrix. The following reactions will now proceed in the cytosol. The L-citrulline is then transported out of the mitochondrial matrix and into the cytosol, where it is converted to arginine-sustinate by arginine-sustinate synthetase. This reaction involves a synthetase enzyme, and as a result, an ATP molecule is utilized. In addition, the molecule L-aspartate contributes the second amino group to the L-citrulline molecule. The L-aspartate molecule is then generated in the mitochondria by transamination. That is, oxaloacetate is converted to L-aspartate aided by aspartate tra aminotransferase where simultaneously oxidative deamination of glucimate takes place contributing the amino, the amino group in oxidative deamination of glutamate. This is catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase and yields an alpha ketoglutarate as well as NADH and ammonia. Arginine succinate is then cleaved to L-arginine by arginine succinase, which also produces fumarate. <clears throat> arginine succinate is then cleaved to L-arginine by arginine succinase, which also produces fumarate as a byproduct that is also used in other metabolic processes such as citric acid cycle. L-arginine is then converted to L-ornithine by the cleavage of the urea molecule off of the L-arginine by arginines. The L-ornithine then moves back into the mitochondrial matrix where the cycle is then repeated with the urea being produced sent to the kidneys to be excreted. In citrulline met type 2, the mutation of the gene SLC25A13 results in the poor function of the citrine, which is a calcium-dependent mitochondrial aspartate glutamine transporter. This transporter is chiefly responsible in the case for the transportation of L-aspartate from within the mitochondrial matrix to the cytosol to the place to take place in metabolic reactions. With the transporter protein not at full capacity, the urea cycle supply of aspartate to the reaction involving ASA synthetase, where citrulline is converted to arginine succinate, is affected as an enzyme ASA synthetase will not metabolize the reaction without the second amino contributor, aspartate. Thus, the reaction is impaired significantly and results in the decrease in the body's capacity to dispose of ammonia. That is, you would have low ammonia production. This then results in what was seen in the patient as hyperammonia, in which the other symptoms were also noted. Well, with respect to treatment for patient Chang, all dietary proteins were immediately stopped and other non-protein caloric sources were used to compensate. Secondly, intravenous sodium benzoate, phenol, sodium, sorry, phenol acetate and arginine were all used as a means to reduce ammonia levels in the blood. Initially, chemodialysis was used to reduce the blood level to a more tolerable level. S lastly, in, with respect to long-term management, the close dietary monitoring was used as well as an oral examination of sodium phenobutyrate and arginine.